Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, and this is Ultimate General Civil War. This is the second half of my fight at the Battle of Fredericksburg, playing in the Confederate No Infantry Campaign Challenge. If you did not see any of the previous episodes, there's a link in the description below, but we are going to pick up right where we left off uh, with that battle, and that is that I have done pretty well, as good as I can hope to, over on my left at Marie's Heights. Now the battlefield opens up. And the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to send these two big units of cavalry, including um, Andrew or uh, Sweets uh, West Virginia Cavalry, which is a new unit, not a new unit, but it's newly named unit, on behalf of one of our newest sponsors of this channel, and that is Andrew Snodgrass. You will see his name listed in the de description of all my videos uh, for the last week or so. Uh, eventually, very soon, I'll be adding an end screen that will also be listing some of those folks who have decided to become uh, supporters through Patreon. Uh, and Andrew is one of those, and we're certainly glad to have him. He is a veteran, a uh, veteran of the 82nd Airborne Division, and uh, I have already expressed this to him personally, but uh, we are grateful for your service, Andrew. Thank you so much, and we're glad you're a part of this channel. So, uh, West Virginia, historically a a Union state uh, that joined the Union in 1863, but uh, we're going to give him that name because that's what he asked for. So I've got these uh, mounted infantry units as well, and we're going to start sending them forward. 40th Kentucky Mounted Infantry is an, a unit that I named. Uh, I had two ancestors who fought in that unit. Um, John Mowry was my third great-grandfather. He was in, uh, gosh, um, company... H, I think. I'm going to have to look it up now. I can't actually remember. Uh, and then John Bailey, who was my fourth great-grandfather, was in uh, Company C. Along with his son. His son, Wiley Bailey, was just 17 years old when he enlisted in the 40th Kentucky. And uh, unfortunately, Wiley was killed uh, at the Battle of Clinch Mountain. It must have been a horrible thing for his father to have actually been in the same unit and probably witnessing his son's death. So basically, to win this battle, I've got to just hold these two objectives. So you can see here, uh, hold Maurice Heights, hold Telegraph Road, and lose less than 50% of my army. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to hold Telegraph Road and Maurice Heights. Maurice Heights should not be a problem. What I'm actually going to do here is uh, I'm, I'm basically going to sweep the field of the enemy before this timer runs out because then the Maurice Heart, Heights part, part of the battlefield closes off. So I want to be able to use my cavalry, wipe out all this enemy so I can start shifting a few of these units over. Although you can see here he's actually shifting a ton over himself. Uh, so we're going to send some reinforcements over because it looks like he's going to throw out there a renewed renewed effort to take Marie's Heights. So I'm going to throw these 24 pounders over there. Robert E. Lee is going to go over and cover Telegraph Road, which is kind of kind of cool because Telegraph Road is supposedly where Robert E. Lee uh, issued his famous quote that many remember from the Battle of uh, Fredericksburg, which is, it is well that war is so terrible or we should grow too fond of it or something to that effect. There's a lot of variations on that quote that have come about. We gotta drive these guys out of the woods because we're not gonna cause a lot of damage while they're there. And my cavalry's getting stuck in this swamp. Oh, now he's sending a bunch of mounted infantry units himself, so that's a problem. That could be a big problem unless I drive them off pretty quick, which it looks like I'm gonna be able to do. Here comes some melee cav, though. That could be a real problem. Kind of didn't see that coming. And I already committed my cab over here. we got to drive these guys out of the woods and then we'll very quickly wipe them out. But he's probably going to break through the 95th rifles. Come on, there we go. Get him out of there. Whew. Gotta be careful. These Blakeleys have taken a lot of casualties. I'm not even sure why they're up there. I, I certainly didn't put them there. All right, we got this guy to surrender. Let's just send him back somewhere, and then 
get this cav down here past the swamp and bring them up on this other side. I'm going to get Whitaker to dismount and just be an additional presence over here. And I'm going to start shifting these 10 pounders over. There's really nothing at all for me to be gained uh, to gain by holding these spots. Did he break through? Kind of. Not in any significant way, not with all of this artillery sitting here. Let's go ahead and send Whitaker over this way. Oh, we've got a thousand men here. So I'll hold Whitaker right there. No, I don't want him over there. I want him back here. I sent the wrong unit. Oh, supplies are running. All right, let's see if we can start wreaking havoc on all his supplies that are back here. If nothing else cause a nice distraction. He's trying to load up over here. Whitworths are almost in range of his artillery right there, but not quite. All right, we got to get the 40th Kentucky down in here somewhere to cause a distraction before he sends even more units this way. What's up, Farnsworth? Gotta be careful here, he's gonna start turning these guns. And here comes some melee calf. But not before I cause a ton of casualties to Elon Farnsworth. At least that's who I'm assuming that is. Alright, we gotta get Jackson in here on this. 3,000 melee calf is hard to stop. Is he sending supplies to recapture supplies? I don't even know if that's possible. Alright, we wiped out a unit here. This battery's about to be toast, but I gotta be careful because there's swamp there. Ride into town. Let's do it. I don't know how well we're gonna mess him up being in town. Big unit lined up right there. Let's go ahead and bring Kemper up. He's a two-star unit. He's bigger at this point than Sims is. We're gonna drop him right into that spot. I'm gonna dismount the 40th Kentucky Cavalry right here. This is where we're just going to start pushing these units down. Now, here's a problem for Sweets. We've probably got to get him out of there. He's biting off more than he can chew with these units that are across the river. Let's pull him out. Same with Jackson. I tend to get overly aggressive with my cavalry and take unnecessary casualties, but mainly what I'm trying to do here is disrupt. So even if you take casualties and you don't cause necessarily a ton on the other side, you usually disrupt the units and cause them to break. Which in a lot of cases is better anyway than sitting there and fighting it out. Especially in town like this. And I just gotta keep an eye on the time because once I do what I need to do, I need to start shifting some of these units back south because he's gonna be coming at me with a lot of uh, troops that haven't been decimated yet. And it's a much more even playing field at Telegraph Road than it is here at Marie's Heights. All right, let's get 
get the cab out of there. Come on, Jackson. This way, please. Man, it's, the last thing I really wanted was cavalry engaged <laughs> in the town like this. But it looks like he shifted everybody over to his extreme right and left all of this wide open. We got another melee cav unit here. We'll start shifting the artillery a little more. Actually, I'll throw these guys in right there. Bring some of these units over further. Alright, we're finally disengaged. Let's go ahead and get behind the lines. Let our line troops deal with these guys for a little while. Okay, I do have a thousand men here, so we're going to move them up. Replace the 95th rifles. Oh, come on, Jackson. Get out of there. That's good for now, buddy. There, Alyssa Wilcox fire on Farnsworth for a little bit, along with all my artillery. Let them come to him and get weakened instead of trying to fight it out in the town. Oh, these 10 pounders are down to 65. They've caused 2,200 casualties, but there's just three guns left. Let's pull them out. trying to re-grab these supplies. I don't think th things can get much quieter over here. In fact, it might be better off if I don't try to go in there and wipe them out because he'll just keep them there and they'll be useless to him at the end of the battle. Whereas I can start sneaking units away here before too long. Alright, I think things are going to probably remain pretty quiet at this point. I might try to get some artillery fire on a few spots here. Like Hexamer right there. I'll start moving my cav over. And I'm just going to start the shift now and... I think I'll probably drop out unless something really dramatic happens. Here's the numbers right now. Um, 20,000 men for me. I've, I've lost about 2,600 of the men who are represented in the units on the field. He's lost significantly more than that. So with about 18 minutes to go in this phase of the battle, he's down to just about 9,000 men on this side. I've pulled out just about everybody I can except for the front line of things. I've still got units shifting, some of whom may not make it in time, but like O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws, they've got 5188 for their kills with 16 deaths. The uh, foreign siege guns, which took a pounding, uh, there were only six of them to begin with. I lost two of them. They caused 5,900 kills. Imagine what 12 of those guns would do uh, if I can get some more of them. But here we go. Now we move back to the right. And hopefully we've balanced the terms of this part of the engagement. I'm a little nervous about this because I know how big his left wing probably is for his army. Or maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go. So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at a little better than 2 to 1 right now. 38,000. So I've just got to build a strong defense. Uh, I don't have the fortifications here that I had at the other position unless I want to go out into a kind of a a bad place but I do want to move up a little bit because I can get at the edge of these woods and he's actually got kind of a difficult terrain to cross with these water uh, bodies of water that are going to divide his lines a little bit 
Let's get down here and throw some of these mounted infantry units on the wing to help out. I'm going to get some artillery down here into position. I'm going to have my melee cab in position so they can help out. I'll have Leggett and O'Hare's over there, but otherwise I'm going to kind of shift everybody else over this way because this is what I've got to protect right here. And make sure he can't sneak in somewhere where I'm not really able to see. I do worry about that a little bit. Let me get these sharpshooters into that fortification. Alright, so that should be about it for everything there. Let's go ahead and speed things along. Not sure where he's going to come at me from. And I think he probably will get more reinforcements over these next four hours. In fact, here they come onto the battlefield now. Although I guess those were already counted in things. He's got me by a little under 22,000 men. That's my third core right there. All right, let's drop out until we make some significant contact. Well, unbelievably, he has chosen not to attack. It is now 2 a.m. on December 14th, and I never saw any attack, never fired a shot in this phase. So that should be it. I believe that should be the end of the battle. There we go. So let's take a look at the final numbers. He had, uh, all told, 122,000 men. I had about 24. 28,000 and there are your casualties now Fredericksburg was the one of the more lopsided casualty figures excuse me of any of the battles but certainly nothing like that so more importantly I want to see some of these things we captured another 7,000 of these SF 1861s which uh, I had something like 15,000 of them going into this battle and I actually used almost all of those to outfit my new troops that I put into the field. Kind of wish I had captured more of some other things. I only rescued some Whitworths, uh, rescued one of my uh, siege guns, I grabbed a lot of supplies, but honestly didn't capture a whole lot else. 25 10-pounder parrots is kind of nice. Uh, we're going to have a ton of promotions, especially to Colonel, which is huge. That's a big, big deal for me. That helps a lot. We've got uh, my history guy has made lieutenant general at last. Let's look at these units. Here we go. These 14-pounder James. My goodness, 8,280 kills. That might be the most I've ever had from an artillery unit in one battle. Four-inch siege guns, only six of them cost 6,000 casualties. Oh, here's Ohio Outlaws, 5,188. Here's my first actual foot soldiers, 4,484. Uh, that was a skirmisher unit uh, of 200. Uh, those were sharpshooters. Uh, so were the first USA sharpshooters. Here's a skirmisher unit that cost 2,500. So dang. Artillery definitely won the day on that one. So now we move on to uh, another big battle coming right up very soon. We've got the Mer Meritorious Service Medal. That's kind of cool. Uh, we're going to be coming up to the Battle of Stones River. And... Uh, I have no idea what we'll be facing there. I'm kind of curious just to see what it looks like as of now. It's obviously going to change a lot uh, by the time we get there, by the time we build up my forces. Right now, he's looking at 63,000 that would be going up against my 25. That would actually be very favorable, but that's going to change. Uh, so I've got a lot of refitting to do. Man, I really wish I had some more of these siege guns. They are fantastic weapons. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't get any of those things in my armory. I am going to have to spend some reputation points. I'll probably spend on some more of these 24-pounders. Those are glorious guns to have as well. Uh, I've got two career points to spend, and I think... Um, hmm. Logistics is nice because I love getting that boost to the... Art, uh, to the uh, uh, resupply, uh, my ammo. Uh, we're going to put the other one in medicine, I think. 
other than that i'll probably save this for the next uh next battle which is going to be evertsville let's take a look at that real quick 18 brigades in an attack all mostly through the woods so uh artillery is going to have limited use as will cavalry in that one uh, and we're facing about 22,000 soldiers so uh, that actually shouldn't be too bad of a fight once i get my units built up and ready to go but that'll be for another time so this episode was a lot shorter than i thought it would be because i really thought we were going to have a big fight on our hands uh on the right flank there at fredericksburg so um last thing i'll do here is cover experience melee damage i think we'll go with cover That'll be a nice bonus to have. All right. So there you have it. If you would drop a like, leave a comment if you would, and we will see you again in uh, several days when we come back with the Battle of Evertsville. Thanks for watching.